Yep. Hi everyone, and we start. Hi everyone, I'm Leo Bar Shalom, the CEO for Bell Energy. I would like to introduce you to Matan Arbel, our CTO. Our planet's most powerful source of energy is the sun. All we want is to make sure this energy realized effectively as possible. You probably already know that, but solar energy panels are mainly made by silicon today. The silicon solar cells still rate it heavy and inefficient, typically allowing between 20% efficiency and requiring scaffolding to apply them on the surface. In the recent years, there have been several innovation in the field of solar cells and number of players have entered to the market with the thin and flexible solar cell. The thin based solar panel provide flexibility, lightweight and affordable manufacture, but they're very inefficient we're talking about between 10 to 15% efficiency. But some of the thin flame technology are based on nanocrystal. So nanocrystals are basically very small uh, crystals that their dimension gives them uh, very good uh, attributes, physical attributes that can be used for solar applications. Uh, these attributes include uh, band gap controllability, basically that we can control which wavelength we can uh, respond to. Uh, high probability for multi-exciton exciton generation, basically meaning that we can make more electron from energetic photon and high absorbance efficiency. In addition, these materials are very well known as far as synthesis and manufacturing uh, capabilities with, so that manufacturing cost for this technology is expected to be very, very low. Our company developed a new type of architecture uh, based on nanocrystals that utilizes all these attributes for a huge technological advantage for solar cell application. And that will allow us to make lightweight solar cells flexible, basically meaning we can put this uh, architecture on whatever substrate we want. We can control the transparency so we can make it semi-transparent. And as I said, also low manufacturing cost. But the main thing is, is that we can, raise the efficiency from the current around 20% to uh, 50% and beyond. So uh, this, this technology can be a game changer as far as the solar world is concerned. Uh, currently, we're running a development project with uh, TNO in their Soliance facility in Eindhoven. Uh, in that research, we've already uh, created and developed uh, ultra-thin uh, structures that's between 30 to 40 nanometers thick that produce the highest current density that is any, of any equivalent uh, uh, structure there is, the equivalent uh, thickness, basically making it one of the most efficient, uh, not one of the most efficient uh, uh, structures and technologies that we have today and making it extremely applicable to various applications. So our technology make it possible to achieve high efficiency. We're talking about over 50% in low weight application for cars, buses, drones, uh, building integrate PV system, uh, power in space, powered boats, and it can also function as a wallpaper solution. Uh, the competitive landscape includes several player in our market. Our advantage is the superior efficiency due to our groundbreaking technology. So our current development project is we're wrapping up the small scale device now and we're moving to the uh, prototype stage, which will be a large scale device, which will also be produced and uh, synthesized with uh, uh, large scale manufacturing in mind. Basically meaning that we can take the, the knowledge that we do when we do the prototype and we can uh, translate it to large scale manufacturing very, very fast. One minute warning. Okay, so our current budgetary requirement for the next 18 months are $2 million, uh, are raising now $1 million in a safe agreement. And we believe that we can raise additional 2 million from non-deluding uh, governmental funds like Horizon and et cetera. Uh, this is our team. Uh, also, uh, Ruth Peter is our IP expert who bring with him extensive experience and leading our IP strategy. Thank you. And thank you. Great presentation. Thank I certainly much. have questions, but I think we have someone who's more of an expert here. So I would hand things over to Yao first. EDP is deep in the space. What do you What do you got, Yao? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a, firstly one main question. Actually, not a question. It's just that if you could speak a bit about your uh, your IP and what it is that you're protecting. I can see sort of a, 
a Jinko Solar, a Canadian Solar, or whatever of these big, big manufacturers of solar panels, um, they have quite large R and D teams. So, what stops them from sort of eventually achieving your efficiencies on, on on their solar panels? Why haven't they done that yet? Well, that's exactly why why I'm asking. <laughs> what, what exactly? Are you uh, well, the patents are basically the structure itself. The, the technology is based on a revolutionary uh, conduction uh, 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 conduction model that allows us to re-engineer these uh, structures, nanostructures. So the, the patent themselves, we have one patent pending and one provisional uh, that are basically the structure itself. The material themselves are well known, uh, both what you said first solar and uh, I don't remember the other company, both of them are using similar materials but the issue is the conduction mechanism that is done in their solar cell okay uh, what about the sort of durability of these uh, of uh, these panels because most flex panels have an issue with uh, durability uh, what what's your uh, take on that well current we currently using materials that already have that are are already used on different application that have five year warranty uh, so we haven't uh, started even the life uh, extended to the technology themselves because right now we're in the as I said we're in the prototype stage but we expect to be able to uh, raise that uh, lifetime significantly mainly because the materials that we're using now, are not UV susceptible. They don't react very well to oxygen, so they do need to be encapsulated. But these technologies are basically shelf uh, shelf manufacturing technology to encapsulate your your solar cell. And also the 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 current technologies have them already, so we're not very worried about that. Um, and you mentioned, so who are your main or who do you see as your main customers? It I think it's a, it depends on the application because our efficiency is very high. It actually means that we have the ability to be almost everywhere in solar uh, industry. We're looking for to bring uh, to be the game changer or, or kind of area that it's not going to be uh, our high competition. So we're looking for a mobility and a uh, thing that will be, uh, or our effort is that will be lightweight and flexibility and also to some transportation. Um, so kind of mobility that really, really help us to achieve uh, our uh, benefit compared to the other things that we have in the market right now. Yeah, so so that's my point. And that was actually my second question is where where are you in terms of cost or at me as an end user, how much would, me, would it cost me to, to have one of your panels uh, as opposed to a conventional sort of heavyweight regular panel? Um, and, and well, yeah. Currently when we do a BOM, um, calculation, we're at about $60 per meter squared. Mm -hmm. And in our, with our technology, uh, uh, one meter squared is expected to do about 600 watts, which is about the same as, uh, it's a bit more than current existing uh, uh, silicon solar panels. So it's half the, the area, but a little bit over uh, with the efficiency. So as far as that's concerned, uh, it's about if you want to use whatever metrics, but so we expect it to be about ten cents a watt. So if you're okay. talking, so if you're talking silicon, you're around twenty five thirty ish. If you're talking any thin film today, it's about one dollar to one and a half dollar per cent uh, per watt. Sorry. Uh, so as far as that's concerned, the the expected uh, manufacturing costs are very very low because we expect to use. Uh, roll to roll techniques, which are manufacturing wise is very cheap to to use. Okay, that's interesting. So do you see, would you see sort of, uh, as you uh, potentially know, uh, EDP has quite a lot of uh, sort of solar and wind farms. Could, could you see sort of a whole solar park uh, being equipped with your technology or would that Sort of be redundant in terms of economics. No, well, we've already talked to a lot of the a lot of the solar market today is actually uh, very regulated. So a lot of the current existing uh, solar uh, farms uh, can just replace uh, their existing uh, technology with ours, or just 
put a put this put a sticker on. The main idea of this technology is to change the way you think of solar, because what we want to do is basically instead of you thinking of a panel that weighs about 30 kilograms and it's very cumbersome to to handle, mm -hmm. we want to make it basically a, a wallpaper. Stick it where, wherever you want. You want to stick it on existing uh, fields. Stick it on an existing field. It, it will just increase your your efficiency. You want to put it on building. You can put it. You can insert it into the building's uh, infrastructure cycle. Basically, every building you have to you have a, a painting cycle and you have a wallpaper cycle and all that. I'm talking big buildings. I'm not talking. Uh, mm -hmm. So you anyway need to uh, do some sort of uh, maintenance on the high high building so add uh, add a, a sticker or more like a wallpaper and then make make electricity out of it it okay. changes the way you think of how you're going to use solar it, it also allows you to change the basic uh, kilogram per watt we expect one meter square to be around 300 grams between 300 and 500 grams per meter squared so on a 600 watt one meter squared you can do whatever you want. You can put it on cars. You can put it on trucks. You can you can do whatever you want. But this actually allows you to utilize the solar uh, the solar power as a, as a as an actual uh, power to to use on your engines rather than just power your lights, which is what solar cars do today. Solar cars do at best they'll maybe power the onboard computer maybe. So, but instead of that, you're you're talking about something that with uh, a small a small truck can can run solar. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of sort of the, this being commercial, when would you expect this to happen? Well, when we finish our uh, prototype stage, we expect because we move from uh, one uh, development project to the to the next, but the the move is expected to be very short we're the reason that we're doing our development project in Soliance is that they're extremely well posed to take uh this kind of technology to large-scale manufacturing they actually have all the machinery already in-house so we expect to we, we want or expect to, to do the first pilots probably with them and then when we get the actual definition of all the machinery, then building a factory will will require uh, collaborations. We I don't have or we don't have the knowledge or the expertise to build an actual manufacturing, but we expect to uh, achieve this knowledge or to to get this knowledge with uh, strategic collaboration. Okay, and um, you mentioned sort of uh, the prototyping stage. Uh, what exactly? So what exactly entails this prototyping uh, and how, so do you have, do you have uh, anything to back up your 50 something percent efficiency that you claim? Yes, we currently have in the lab, we built a three by three uh, centimeter uh, solar cell that we sample with the pixels because that's how the, the labs work. You basically, you do your, on, on a slab of glass, that's a substrate, that's three by three centimeters. And then you move, to a 10 by 10 centimeters or a six and a half inch by six and a half inch. And the reason we say that when we move it for two reasons, first of all, a prototype, the base cell of current solar uh, technologies is, is 100 uh, centimeters squared, basically 10 by 10 centimeters. So when you do a basic cell or a basic module, depends on what, how you want to call it, but when you do a 10 by 10, that's your basic, um, a module for panels today. So that's why we consider that as a prototype. So right now we're at the stage of wrapping up this small scale device, defining all of the materials and all of the structures, and then moving it to the larger scale when we, the, the fabrication techniques that we're gonna use are fabrication techniques that are posed to be compatible to roll to roll manufacturing. So the move from uh, from the with the fabrication techniques is basically speeds and ink quantities, and that's why we expect it to be in a short amount of time to reach the 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 the, the, the manufacturing capabilities and definitions. Would you say there is a risk that uh, that this efficiency is somewhat dwarfed as you scale? 
the risk itself is not in the efficiency right now. The problem is actually raising money because the the environment is really bad with raising <laughs> with raising money. But no, because the what we get now is we get uh, close to 100% yield with our small scale device. So yes, there's always a risk when you move from a small scale to a larger scale, but it's mitigated with the techniques that we know. And we have a partner that's that's their main um, expertise. So that's why we're doing this with them. Okay. When something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. What is wrong here? Where are the big issues? What's not come up yet? I don't know what I don't know yet. I can tell you that in the lab, there was, since this uh, structure is very, uh, very, very small nanometric structure, quite literally. And what we found out is that we need to, uh, to put more emphasis on uh, accurate material and deposition techniques in order to achieve a more ideal um, uh, relationship or, or uh, coordination between the materials themselves because it's a nanometric structure. That much I can tell you, but this is something that we already, we've already overcome. So if you're asking what are the future uh, uh, challenges, then I, I, I don't know what I don't know. The, the model itself predicts most of the, all of the behavior we see in the lab and, and add some. So right now we're working on the engineering part. So engineering usually is a when question, not an if question. The if questions was already answered because we have a working solar cell that shows the efficiency. It shows that the, the, the current densities is crazy high. Um, how, sorry, uh, how is, um, how is, you just mentioned that raising money is a challenge. How is this a challenge? Because uh, you, like, like Matt said, you, you have a panel that's going over 50% efficiency and that's sort of a true game changer because currently, and as you mentioned, you have 15 or 20 to 20% percent efficiency rate uh, uh, ranges. I mean, anyone can-, can We don't have a panel. Them. We have we have a working you have the, well, you, you, prototype. True, but, but you have a- you have the, Does the, that mean the you want to invest in us? That's great. Um, could be, um, but-, uh, but the, the, the hard. challenge right now is because we just got the, the report. We, it, it's happened right now. So we just start to raise the money right now and we just start. So we just got it uh, like a week and a half, two weeks ago. So we, okay. we just start to raise the money. So the situation right now, you know, also in, uh, in Israel, etc. But we believe that we raise the money. It's a question of time. How do you go to market? What's your strategy? Go to market strategy. It's actually, it's too early to really uh, mention that right now because we uh, develop it right now, but we already think, and I mentioned that in the presentation that we are looking to get, probably to start with the mobility um, because we have the ability to be lightweight and the high efficiency. That's something that's really, really important to do guys at this kind of industry. So probably much will start in this kind of uh, industry. Any last questions on your side, Yao? Um, just perhaps one sort of uh, uh, what you see as uh, sort of excluding financing. What do you see as your sort of uh, biggest challenge moving forward? High scale manufacturing. Okay. We need to define the machinery very, very accurately. That's why the next stage, the prototype stage is very critical because all of the um, fabrication techniques will, be, will have to be uh, upscaled. And those are, you need to define a machine that does the, all of the stages in one go in order to have the role to roll manufacturing. So the definition between moving from a lab on a, a, a from a structure that we build on basically a, a big glass substrate to a roll to roll manufacturing, this whole um, technique and the whole definition of the stages, uh, that's, that's, a, that's an engineering challenge. 
I wouldn't say it's a it's a risk because it's it's basically an engineering. I mm. we already uh, researched a few of the uh, manufacturing companies that manufacture the machinery, and they're very interested in in working us in the, in 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 the future. But as as I said, we need first to define the full process. 